Hi, my name is Craig Filipkowski, and I would like to present to you the information and data that I collected um, in a paper recently published in Action Learning Research and Practice. The title of the article is Developing School Leaders with Action Learning, and the data stems from my dissertation, K-12 Administrator Development with Action Learning. Um, so today, I, I, I want to discuss um, throughout the course of this presentation, I'd like to get into the purpose of the study, uh, the conceptual framework, uh, the population that I dealt with, uh, the research question, the hypotheses and data collection methods. Uh, and finally, we'll take a look at some of the implications for school leaders and principal preparation programs in uh, the at the university level. So with that said, uh, you can see at the top of this slide, uh, that the Ohio State's Board of Education has an approved uh, principal framework in which the fourth standard principles um, establish and sustain collaborative learning and shared leadership to promote learning and achievement of all students. Uh, this is the type of language that you're going to find in, in many of the states here in the U.S. Uh, there's definitely a push in education uh, to become what may be referred to as a collaborative leader. Uh, however, when we take a look at a report from the Wallace Foundation of 2016 that exam examined principal preparation programs around the United States, uh, we see that these programs are often lacking in uh, components that may, that may foster a collaborative leader. Uh, for example, relationships, um, or collaboration was ranked among the five lowest areas measured, uh, despite being considered critical, uh, quote unquote. And additionally, the exper experiential learning component valued so much by current superintendents and administrators um, is often weaker than is hoped for. So action learning is a form of collaborative teams that has a focus not just on action solutions, but also on the learning that takes place in each of the meetings. In fact, uh, the way that the specific model used in this study, which is the WILD method, uh, is designed, it purports learning at the individual, the team, and the organizational levels. So most intriguing to me as I uh, learned about action learning was this emphasis on um, the questioning. So if you're an action learning coach, you understand no statements may, can be made unless they're in response to a question. In terms of significance of the study, uh, there's an opportunity to test the indicators of a collaborative learning environment and whether or not they can improve significantly in one's uh, school after a leader participates in an action learning program. So this study sought to discern whether action learning is a viable path to developing leadership skills while simultaneously working on problems that exist in real time. Um, if this impact is shown, it would contribute to a response to what the, uh, the Wallace Foundation had found. Uh, a specific quote from that paper is that district leaders are largely dissatisfied with the quality of principal education programs, and many universities believe their programs do have room for improvement. So this uh, leads me to the purpose of the study, which is in fact twofold. Uh, first, I uh, wanted to measure the impact on the elements of a school's professional environment um, after a, an administrator participated in an action learning set as a form of professional development. Um, secondly, much of the research prior to this study um, focuses on both case studies and qualitative data. Um, and the, the focus of this study, while it is a case study, I felt like any quantitative data I could collect would be beneficial. So that was the focus here. Um, and it's the study I sought to provide uh, a broader reach um, of the impact than just the participating administrators, uh, meaning I wanted to see whether or not there was actually organizational learning going on um, post action learning intervention. You can see here the conceptual framework in more detail on the right hand side and then simplified version here on the left. And uh, I can't, you know, I came across a 
an article by Joe Rayland that was written in 2006 titled, Does Action Learning Promote Collaborative Leadership? And it really started me thinking about what specific structures would foster the development of uh, leaders to be more collaborative, specifically in my case, education. Um, he argued that action learning does promote collaborative leadership. So this study seeks to connect these two concepts by testing whether or not participation in an action learning uh, program will promote collaborative leadership. If so, then we would see indicators indicators of uh, a collaborative environment as well. Because when collaborative leadership is practiced, it leads to collaborative environment. Uh, the more detailed uh, conceptual framework on the right provides an understanding of how we, or how I operationalized action learning, how I defined collaborative leadership, and how I operationalized uh, a collaborative environment supported by school leaders, uh, which is the outcome that ultimately I wanted to measure. Um, you'll also notice that the administrator is included in the conceptual framework, and this is because outcomes in this study are realized only through the impact they had on survey respondents indirectly uh, through each of the program participants, and those participants would have been the administrators. On the left-hand side, you can see uh, a simplified version of the conceptual framework, ultimately a Administrator takes part in action learning set, processes the action learning process, uh, potentially leads to collaborative leadership styles, and then potentially leads, leads to a collaborative environment um, following that leadership. So as I mentioned, uh, this is a case study of one uh, school district where I asked six administrators uh, to participate in an action learning program consisting of eight sessions over uh, their summer break. And I surveyed the staff of five of these six administrators before their participation in the program. So their pretest, and then also four months following the last action learning session, which will be the post test. Uh, the reason there are only five of the six uh, would be because one of the administrators is a student transition coordinator and had no staff to survey. Um, so with regard to the data, although um, the initial pre-survey yielded 112 respondents, in the end, I could only verifiably um, match 35 sets of, um, of data from pre to post, which was required for the data analysis. Um, they needed to be matched by identifiers, and, and I could only get 35, so unfortunately. Uh, with this data, I, um, I wasn't able to uh, meet assumptions for parametric testing in most cases, So, um, but I was able to conduct some non-parametric testing uh, with a test called the Related Samples Wilcoxon Signed Rank Test. Uh, in all cases, um, I was able to test for significance. So you will see that in the data that I present. Um, I'll highlight when uh, it is a parametric test, but uh, all but one will be non-parametric um, findings. If you take a look at the two different populations, uh, well, First of all, while describing the population uh, that participated in the study, I feel like I need to um, separate the involvement into two separate buckets. This first slide being the first bucket, and that's um, the teachers. So um, that's the teachers that took part in the survey. And then secondly, the next slide will be the administrators. So this page provides some information on those teachers, and that's the percentages um, one thing to note is that the percentages are the percentage of the final teacher count included in the study, not the percentage of the overall teachers in the district. Um, you can see in the first table that uh, participation was fairly representative of the building's populations. Uh, for example, the high school staff uh, was the largest and also represented the largest percentage of the surveys. Uh, the second and third tables indicate a larger percentage of veteran teachers. So the difference in these two different in these two tables is that the second shows years of experience uh, overall, while the third table is an indication of how many years they've been in this particular district. 
and not while well, not included in this slide um, or any table here, it is of note that the 35 teacher respondents analyzed are representative of 236 potential respondents. So that's 14.8% of the teacher population. So it's, it's a fairly representative uh, sample of the district. On this uh, next slide, you can see the second bucket that I referred to, which is the administrators. Um, if we look closely, the years in education, um, beginning at the treatment, this is uh, the first thing. It ranges from eight to 23 years. The second um, is a range of experience they had as administrators beginning of the treatment, which range from two to five years. Uh, only one uh, of the administrators changed in title over the course of the study, and that was one that became principal over that particular summer. So continue through the slideshow, we um, look at this uh, overarching research question that kind of helped guide my uh, writing of the, the four separate uh, null hypotheses. Uh, and that research question is, what, if any, impact on building level administrators' leadership practices result after their participation in an action learning program? And that first hypothesis, which was a null hypothesis, uh, following a building level administrator's participation in an action learning program, there will be no significant difference in their staff's perception of school leader support or collaboration. Second null hypothesis would be the same beginning to that statement. There will be no um, significant difference in their staff's actual participation in decision-making. Third, there will be no significant difference in their staff's satisfaction concerning participation in decision-making. And then finally, there will be no difference in explicit opportunities for collaboration, i.e. formalization of participation in decision making. So um, those are the uh, hypotheses and the research question that helped guide this entire study. The instruments that we used would be the uh, Weil action learning method and then also the Honig and Hoog uh, survey that I um, pulled out of the Netherlands. Um, very interesting um, combination that was able to support my, my needs in this study. So um, the title of the instrument, I'm sorry, the title of the article that I pulled the instrument from, from Hanagan Hoog is called uh, The Effect of School Leader Support and Participation in Decision-Making on Teacher Collaboration. Um, you can see in the beginning of this slide here that the um, action learning model is represented by the while. It includes the while method, which includes the problem or challenge, um, four to eight members, questions and reflection, a commitment to take action, commitment to learning, and then finally a coach. Um, and there, as I mentioned, the survey from Honigan who measured um, essentially what I referred to as leading indicators toward desired results. And I um, define this just like Kirkpatrick and Kirkpatrick did in 2016 as short-term observations and measurements that suggest critical behaviors are on track to create a positive impact on the desired results. So these are all the variables that were studied within this survey instrument that perceived school leader support, actual participation in decision-making, uh, satisfaction with participation in decision-making, um, teachers' orientation towards student performance, teacher collaboration, and finally, formalization of decision-making. So some of those may look familiar from the hypotheses that I just read. We move to the next slide. Uh, we look at some of the data that we uh, were able to collect, and these are the descriptive statistics, um, all of them indicated, or three of the variables indicated, there was an increase in their aggregate scores from pre to post um, survey. So uh, for, formalization being the one that did not increase from pre to post in the survey. So if we move into this 
first hypothesis. This is probably our most important finding, and that is that um, the null hypothesis was rejected when testing for a significant difference in uh, perception of school leader support for collaboration. Uh, you can see that there is a significant finding of P equaling uh, 0 0.029. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, these are non-parametric findings. Um, a paired t-test was conducted but was not able to meet assumptions. So we used the related samples Wilcox and sign rank test. Um, additionally, you see an effect size um, from the man Whitney U test at negative 0 0.260, which is a uh, considered a, a small impact or small effect size. Click here. We look at our second null hypothesis. We did not, uh, or we found that the null hypothesis was accepted. Um, with a significance of 0 0.064. Um, and that's the uh, significant difference, lack of significance um, in the actual participation and decision making. Third, we, um, when looking at satisfaction concerning participation and decision making, again, the null hypothesis accepted. Um, with that significance uh, being at a 0.386. Finally, uh, we see a um, 0.815 significance um, P score um, when looking at formalization of participation and decision making. So there was no significant difference, statistically significant difference from pre to post when looking at this final hypothesis. Uh, I did decide to add a couple of the additional analyses that were included in the data. Um, although they weren't in the hypotheses, they were part of um, the instrument that I used. And so I felt it was important to present that data. Uh, this first one being the teacher's orientation towards student performance. Um, there was, again, no significant difference uh, with a P-score of 0 0.094. Um, and then finally, again, uh, this, this is a second uh, piece of data that I was able to collect. In this case, I was able to meet assumptions for parametric testing, so I used the uh, paired T-test. And um, in the end, I did get a P-score of 0.749, so there was no significant difference in teacher collaboration uh, according to the results of the survey analysis. Um, so if you look at these results uh, holistically, um, you can see the overall impact on the school environment um, of the school buildings after their administrators participated. Um, specifically, you can see that only uh, the perception of school leader support for collaboration was the only, uh, while it is an important variable, it was the only uh, variable that saw a significant change from pre to post test. So if we get to um, kind of what the purpose of this, you know, one of, one of the things we want to get out of this was what are the implications for school leaders out there? Uh, there's three major implications I found for school leaders, and the first one would be um, I do feel cautiously confident in saying that action learning is a viable approach uh, to developing individual administrators um, so that they can have some sort of organizational impact on the people that they lead. Specifically, um, it says PSLS, which stands for Perception of School Leaders Support for Collaboration. Um, secondly, um, it provides a structure for team-based problem solving while keeping a spotlight on learning within the team um, and how that learning can be applied to the organization. So I think that that's important. There are TBTs, um, teacher-based teams in U.S. education, as well as professional learning committees, and these are all um, collaborative teams, but they're not necessarily problem-solving teams that um, balance action and learning together as action learning does. Uh, additionally, 
you've got a system in place that allows for learning and reflecting upon self-identified goals and skills that people would like to develop. Um, finally, I think it also provides an opportunity um, by engaging multiple stakeholders through a shared sense of responsibility across a district and even within a building. Um, and, and this is needed in a collaborative environment. Um, so there's many implications for school leaders. Uh, some implications for colleges uh, or universities. Um, I would like to first redirect us to the quote that I uh, shared earlier from the Wallace Foundation report about principal preparation programs. And that was uh, district leaders are largely dissatisfied with the quality of principal preparation programs. And many universities believe their programs have room for improvement. Um, so the report goes on to make suggestions for improvements based upon its findings. And among that list of recommendations are the encouragement of uh, relevant experiential learning, uh, which includes action learning. Uh, in the pre preparation of critical responsibilities, um, such as team building, problem solving, decision making, uh, relationships and collaboration, all of which are embedded within the while action learning model. Um, again, I, I believe these needs are met through action learning and can be seen um, through the leading indicators uh, for a collaborative environment. Um, and in this study, we found um, a significant uh, impact on the perception of school leader support for collaboration. So before I close out this presentation, I just wanted to um, highlight one recommendation for research. Uh, in addition to uh, kind of revising the research to des design to broaden the sample uh, and address some various threats to internal validity, I do think it's important to um, have a control group in future studies in order to get um, a much stronger um, answer to the question of th that we asked here in this research study. So that would be my final note. Um, with that said, I would like to thank everybody for their intention and I hope that you found my research um, impactful and, and uh, important and beneficial. Um, thanks again for listening.